I welcome you all to my next class and today we'll be taking up John Keats who was a great poet and a very important poet from the point of view if you see uh, of your net examination or any other examination this writer plays a very important part in English literature his works are a notable one and it touches our life too when we talk about john keats he has written different types of poetry where he explains the joy of nature and there are different odes that he he has represented though he lived his life very shortly because he was sick and he died of tuberculosis but the words that he has written are very important so today we will see his works in a brief discussion we'll we'll take a brief discussion on his works like hyperion lamia isabella or the pot of basil and last work endymion yes we will also take his odes but on our next presentation because uh, when i was looking after the odes they are really very important and it needs a different video so where i can explain you each and every ode and can discuss each and every important point so today we will see hyperion lamia isabella and endymion now let's talk about john keats the very introduction says john keats was a simple but an eminent poet of romantic period where his simplicity can be noticed in his works where he shows his concern for his readers and for them escape from their hectic lifestyle now the very things that john keats faced in his life he was a very simple poet and a known poet of romantic period and you can notice his simplicity in his works when you will see his works his simplicity can be easily noticed he also shows his concern for his readers that when they are going to read this they will get a escape from their hectic hectic lifestyle now keats was the one uh he said that the day he read spencer he said i find i cannot exist these are these line are within quotes i find i cannot exist without poetry without eternal poetry that last forever right eternal is something that last forever half the day will not do the whole of it means he was truly uh, you know he was deep into the poetry as he read spencer he finds poetry so uh, deeply concerned with that he cannot live without poetry and these lines were written by keats to john hamilton reynolds please remember that that he was uh, highly inspired by uh the readings of uh, spencer the works of spencer that he read and so he wrote these lines to john hamilton reynolds right now there was unhappiness in his life and one of the reason was his wife fanny brown uh, which gave rise to more unhappiness beside he was unhappy due to several things because uh, in a very less age his brother died and then he was also sick and one other reason was his wife he was a great poet and he wrote all his works between 1817 to 1820 okay so uh, when we say he was a great poet of romantic age and his death was a big loss to an english poetry kyunki english poetry mein aisa poet so it was a big loss for english poetry he was a quick learner and at the age of 17 he learned mannerism of elizabethan time 
and starting and started writing at his age that means he learned things quickly and at the age of 17 only at the age of 17 he learned in the manner and the style elizabethan used to write so and he started writing at that very age as he was highly influenced by uh, spencer so the very first verse that he wrote was imitation of spencer now in the opinion of keats writing poetry was an art which naturally comes from his one's heart now uh, he said uh, that when we can always notice in keats poem that when he wrote it was in a very pure form and he always kept his lines simple and he has shown love for nature and beauty so his poetry basically presents a simplicity and a love for nature and description of that beauty of which beauty nature's beauty now during the 19th century there was a wave of revolutionary idealist but keats was not at all interested and he seems to be from ancient time and his concern and his was basically of love and magic and that he spell in his poetry so basically he had a concern for his readers that one can escape from their hectic lifestyle now he said he also said as i have already mentioned and I, as i have already told you that keats was a writer where he said that poetry was an art and it comes naturally it cannot be made and if one is making then he is not a he or she is not a poet it naturally comes from one's heart now keats work carries traces of hellenic art and this comes from the inspiration of greeks and elizabeth what is hellenic art that comprises of two things that is greek and modern so it relates to the greek art history and culture as well as it comprises of the modern things right so basically he can see the traces of hellenic art as well as elizabethan romanticism so it was the inspiration that came from greeks and elizabethans so keats life was full of sufferings if one sees his life was full of sufferings and we can notice in his works there was a feeling of pessimism he started you know he he had the feeling he has a state of believing that something bad will happen and so he was always sad in his mind he had that melancholy and both you know you can see that they have invited uh, he has invited death so that it can take away the sorrows of their miserable existence because they were suffering from sickness so this was all about keats a small introduction where you have to remember uh, the lines that he has said uh, to john hamilton please remember that again i am telling i find i cannot exist without poetry and he has said this when he had read spencer and so he was highly influenced by spencer all right now all his notable works were from between 1817 to 1820 and then he wrote his first verse that is imitation of spencer now uh keats work carries traces of hellenic art ye aaj rakhiyega because this can be asked in your examination now moving on to his works like the very first work works of keats sleep and poetry one of his early work carries several defects in it where he shows criticism against neoclassical poetry why he was against 
neo classical poetry the very first point that comes why he shows criticism against them in this poetry so let me tell you that this was his early work and there were several defects and because of several dis- defects it cannot bring that magic that other poetry has brought so uh, this was considered to be an immature work of keats and he thought that uh, he he has shown strongly you know uh, he shows his criticism against the neo classical poetry he thought or you can say that he found 18th century poetry full of you know musty laws rather than art he says that there were several rules and regulations in neo classical poetry the laws that they followed uh, while writing their poetry so he finds them uh, you know he was against all these uh, laws and he says that poetry is a form of art and one should write it in that form he also mentions different people like uh, apollo petarch and piagus and there was a line worth notice what is more gentle than a wind in summer what is more soothing than the pretty humor that stays one movement in an open flower that stays one movement in an open flower and bustles cheerily from bar to bar and a question mark this was the worth notable lines in this poetry and through this poetry one can see keats attitude towards life and this is well reflected but due to several defects it cannot be brought out so sleep and poetry is the earliest work please don't forget and it shows criticism against neo classical poetry now coming to the other work that is hyperion now he presents an epic theme through hyperion but this work was an unfinished work and its part fall of hyperion is also an unfinished work now let's see what he tries to he what he's trying to show in this work this work he wanted to write in a miltonic verse form and he started uh, when he started writing this he started with this uh, miltonic form but later he failed to follow the miltonic verse so he wrote in his own terms in his own style so keats uh, he writes a fragment based on the epic theme and it shows the struggle between the old race gods versus the young ones now the old race gods who were they they were saturn and hyperion right versus apollo that is the young one he started writing this poem in 1818 and he ends it in 1819 he wrote this work in two version neither of them was completed he he wrote this work in two versions that is hyperion and fall of hyperion and he could not finish either of them now it shows through hyperion he shows the fall of titans that is hyperion over olympian that is apollo so as this was an um, unfinished work we can only make out that it shows the struggle between old gods and it also shows the fall of titans that is hyperion were and who comes against them that is the young apollo so hope this work is clear we are clear with sleep and poetry and hyperion now the next work that is isabella or the pot of basil now this work was written in 1818 was uh, published in 1818 and it is a long narrative poem and it presents the story of a Florentine maiden Isabella and her love for Lorenzo 
where her two brothers kill her love Lorenzo in her forest. Now let's see in detail. This particular work is taken from Boccaccio's Decameron. Please remember this work of Keats is being taken from Boccaccio's Decameron. And this is a story of Florentine maiden and her name was Isabella. She falls in love with an employee named Lorenzo who was being employed in her kingdom only. Isabella gets to know about... So this poem tells us about the wicked brothers who kills Lorenzo because they did not wanted uh, Florin, uh, Florentina or uh, maiden Isabella to marry an employee that is Lorenzo. So he takes him to the forest and there he buries them. Uh, buries Lorenzo. Okay. He uh, Isabella, she gets to know about the deed and who tells her? In her dream, she gets to know and uh, Lo Lorenzo Ghost tells her. Please remember that Lorenzo Ghost tells her in her dream about the deed. She takes Lorenzo's head, she puts in the pot of basil and she used to keep with her that pot of basil. Her brothers... By seeing her devotion, they thought why she is being so devoted to this pot. They steal it. When they find Lorenzo, they run out of fear and never come back. And Isabella, at last, she dies in grief because Lorenzo was not there. So this was all about Isabella or the pot of basil and wicked brothers about two wicked brothers now moving on to the next work that is endymion and lamia now endymion when we talk about endymion it was published in 1880 as that of isabella or the pot of basil when we talk about endymion it was an outstanding work of 19th century and this Endymion title is named after figure from Greek myth. Please remember that Endymion title is named after figure from Greek myth. Now this was a masterpiece of early 19th century. And please remember there was a line that is important and within quotes that I am going to say that is a thing of beauty is a joy forever. This was according to Keats. He said that a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Now the opening lines of poetry show that according to the poet things of beauty a beautiful thing of nature it always gives pleasure to our soul. मतलब कोई भी जो अच्छी चीज होगी जो सुंदर चीज होगी वो हमारी सोल को प्लेजर देगी ठीक है सो व्हाट इज ऑल अबाउट एंडीमियन एंडीमियन पोएट पोएम में क्या था एंडीमियन ही वाज इन सर्च ऑफ जॉय एज ही इज नॉट सैटिस्फाइड टू व्हाट ही हैड सो ही हैड टू फेस डिफरेंट सिचुएशंस एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टोरी एंडीमियन is from Greek mythology. It is a long poem and is divided into four books and is in 4000 lines. Please remember it is in 4000 lines as I have already mentioned and is divided into four books. And you mean a beautiful shepherd. Kaha ka shepherd hai? He was, he was a handsome shepherd and he was there in Mount Latmos in Kyria. He is loved by the moon goddess Dinah, Cynthia, Fo. They all are one but here uh, when they exist in these books they come in different names. So I have to mention Cynthia, Dinah and Fo. 
endymion it shows an unending desire in search of love which he tell his sister uh, piona that he felt in his dream now he is trying to tell his sister that he has seen a dream and he is in search of love that is an unending desire of endymion that is shown while he was searching he goes into a deep forest and there he meets goddess of love venus and adonis so this was in the in which book in book 2 theek hai starting mein he was in search of love aur jo dreams dekha tha then in book 2 he goes deep in into the forest in search of his love and there he meets goddess of love venus and adonis now in the when we talk about uh, this when he goes in search of love in the deep forest it carries a description narration of uh, which is full of classical and emotional analysis in it dreams of an idol woman and his life changes now what he tries to explain in this book it carries a description and narration that was uh, that contained a classical and emotional analysis now in book 3 he takes endymion uh, he he takes himself to oceans deep where he meets glaucus and skyo where he tells his story he again uh, tells his story to glaucus and skyo in book 4 he meets an indian maiden and with that indian maiden he falls in love but he was guilty that what he is going to uh, tell moon goddess cynthia uh, about his love that he has fallen in mud, uh, in love with an indian maiden so out of guilt he tells everything and then that indian maiden reveals that she was only cynthia so this was all about endymion keeping it short endymion is a poetry about he searching for his love he goes to forest then deep into oceans he tells his story and at last he falls in love with an indian maiden he saw that moon goddess cynthia in his dreams and so he was in search of his love so this is all about endymion please remember that this title endymion is named after a figure from greek myth i hope it is clear so agar kahin par bhi aapke exam mein uh, cynthia dina hope ye aapse pucha ja sakta hai ki kaun kaun se moon goddess unhone wahan pe names mention kiye hain so i have mentioned these names so that you should not get confused वो पूछ लेते हैं दे जनरली आस्क यू दैट इसमें से कौन नहीं है वो मून गॉटस सो वी हैव थ्री द फोर्थ यू कैन ऑटोमेटिकली मार्क इट आई होप इट इज क्लियर नाउ द लास्ट पोयम दैट इज लामिया लामिया मींस अ सर्पेंट ठीक है अ सर्पेंट इट वाज पब्लिश्ड इन 1890 एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेंशनड in a very dark words you can see above its main source in writing this particular lamia which is serpent its main source is found in burton's anatomy of melancholy and its story is from the greek of philostratus that is second and third century ad and inspiration is being taken from dryden's fable it is a story of a witch named lamia where god hermes mercury he was in search of his love maiden and as that maiden nymph uh, she uh, she becomes invisible and in search lamia tells him that she will help him in finding his maiden but in return 
he had to turn him a uh, her into a beautiful lady hermes he agrees to this condition and she is being transformed to a beautiful lady as lamia was in love with a young cornet lucius please remember she was in love with a young cornetian lucius she goes to lucius lucius she uh, being amazed to see her as she was very beautiful and he falls in love with her at once he takes her to her mansion where they lived happily and later lucius he decides to marry her but there was a condition that lamia keeps he says she says i'm sorry she says that uh, she agrees that she will marry him but he should not invite his teacher and philosopher apollinus but the uh, he says okay to it lucius he was okay with everything the party was going on and on the day of his marriage his teacher automatically comes to that party without any invitation and calls lamia by her name and mentions her as a serpent and as he mentions her she vanishes and because of grief because of that sadness lucius dies so it is said that the passionate love whenever we talk of passionate love it is an illusion and ultimately it brings destruction to one's life here lamia seems to say the very thing that the passionate love is an illusion and ultimately it brings destruction keats wrote letters to fanny brown indicate that he was he was really obsessed he was at the back of a, of a beauty and at the same time he was fearful about his freedom so if you can see some or the other way keats tries to mention his fear through this poem that he was at the back of her beauty but he had fear that he will lose his freedom so this was all about keats poetry and keeping it short we will discuss about his odes in a very short form so that you can learn it easily go through these poetry they are very important and so here i end my lecture but if you like this lecture please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you and see you in my next class